Hello and welcome to River Talk. I'm here with uh, Beata Werner, head of the Water Group for the European Environment Agency. And we're here um, to discuss a little bit about um, European directives and uh, how river restoration can fit within those to help them achieve their objectives. Uh, Beata, it's really interesting to listen to your uh, presentation yesterday in the plenary session. You spoke a lot about um, the effectiveness of the Water Framework Directive. Would you like to explain a little bit more how well you, you see the Water Framework Directive helping us to achieve healthy rivers and related ecosystems in Europe? Yes. Um, as I explained yesterday in my presentation already, so we had uh, in 2012, uh, we had the uh, view that really from the uh, first round of rivers management planning, we could see that only 53% of the water bodies in Europe would reach uh, good environmental status. Uh, that is the expectation for 2015. Um, and together with that, we had also from the uh, nature directive that really only 15% uh, of the habitats were in good favorable status. So we are under quite some pressure to improve that. And uh, we can see now in the second round of the river basin management plans that there is uh, a good chance to reach further the achievements uh, under the Water Framework Directive uh, and um, uh, have a further improvement um, with the management we are doing there, um, hopefully, uh, on the ground. Okay, so, so there's some progress, but there's still some way to go, if, if that's a reasonable way to put it. But at, at the current time, what, sort, what do you see as the main sorts of challenges and, and bottlenecks to really making progress in the coming, in the coming years? You, you spoke a little about that yesterday as well. Yeah, uh, I mean, the pressures uh, that are um, uh, on our rivers is very clear. It's from the uh, diffuse pollution and from the mainly from the agricultural inputs very much, uh, but we also have the hydromorphological changes and, and alterations uh, that really uh, affect our uh, rivers as a habitat and in a structural way. And I think these are really the elements uh, we have to address uh, in the implementation of the rural basin management plans, and that involves really all actors on the ground, and I think there the uh, practical implementation close to the river with all the actors uh, on local level um, should uh, uh, that that gap uh, with a, a high level policy uh, needs to be closed, and uh, the practical implementation of the ground uh, needs to be driven forward. Okay. Now, we're here this week really to talk a lot about river restoration, um, and there's been a lot of activity at the policy level in recent uh, years, uh, at the EU level on green infrastructure, and perhaps more specifically to the water directives, uh, natural water retention measures. How, what sort of role, what sort of value do you see these sorts of approaches in helping to overcome some of these challenges that you've just mentioned? I think it is really about to try to win this kind of uh, win-win situation like uh, natural water retention measures, uh, floodplain restoration. And what we can see actually with the practical implementation on the ground is uh, that we can um, uh, rather easily and, and naturally uh, combine and coordinate the objectives uh, of the different directives uh, we have to implement, which is a water framework directive, as well as the nature directives, as well as the flood directive. And if you go closer to the coast, you also have the marine strategy framework directive. Uh, and all of that, in the end, are focusing on a similar uh, set of objectives. And they all have uh, management plans uh, to implement these objectives. So the um, implementation of these directives and the coordination of the objectives is really an issue that should happen uh, on the, um, in, in, the, in the planning phase of the respective management plans. Okay, so it's a question of getting local uh, scale implementation and the bringing together of these different objectives. And with, with the second round of river basin management plans now in, in the process of preparation, do you see that as a, an opportunity to take that agenda forward? Absolutely. I think this is a, a window of opportunity now uh, in the drafting of the second uh, round of the river basin management plans. Uh, and I think this, uh, the, the coordination and the dialogue between the different stakeholders um, uh, around the river uh, is something where the Water Framework Directive provides with a public participation uh, as well a very good tool. And I, as I mentioned yesterday, uh, we have recently, just last week, uh, published a report on uh, um, public participation in the Water Framework Directive and other directives um, in the water area. And uh, we can see there 
that um, with an, an open and engaged dialogue and with uh, uh, opening up the process not only to the wider public but in particular to include uh, the stakeholder that are related to the different drivers and pressures, uh, that this kind of process really helps uh, to achieve the objectives um, of the directive and of the policy process. Okay, well, that's really excellent. You mentioned that report. That was one of my next questions. Okay, but then in terms of perhaps a final question on how to take this forward, um, how would Let's you see stakeholders within this, this meeting, within River Restoration there? What, what would be your recommendations for how they should take this agenda through the next river basin management plans? Two or three well, thoughts. <laughs> I would think uh, engage, think about win-win uh, uh, situations, um, and... Uh, uh, the, the important thing is uh, to, to keep an open and uh, uh, constructive dialogue uh, and that we need to break down institutional barriers um, not only between institutions and the different uh, actors uh, but also in the administration we always see that uh, there is uh, it's a matter of language, it's a matter of uh, institutional uh, uh, differences in organization in, in the, in the different national organization of the organizations and uh, this is something uh, where I think we can improve. Okay, well Beate Werner, thank you very much for your time.